I guess I'm gonna zoom this again. Okay, uh, what I have here is nothing more than uh, a basic Open API specification. You can download this from the official repository just to give it a baseline. And so, uh, Spectral, again, you give it this file. It's gonna analyze the file and yeah. it's gonna show you what it thinks is not okay with your Open API specification. So it's telling me, the operation should have an empty tag array on line 18, and so I can just go here and fix this by doing um, tags, uh, test, and test two. And if I save the file and I run it again, the line 19 is not there anymore. Uh, but you know, given it's customizable, I can also do, it, do skip rule tags, and this time, you know, it's gonna skip the whole thing. And I can do the same with multiple rules. Uh, so again, skip rule, uh, model description. If I tap it correctly, now, you know, you just see the warnings that you want to see. Uh, you know, Spectral also supports configuration file, and so what I can do, I can create a special file and saying, you know, the rule set that I want to apply to my whole company, you know, it's a file you can put in your GitHub repository and share it everywhere in the company. And so you can kind of create the way you do your APIs. And so, you know, if you don't define a tag in this particular example, it's an error. And so your CI CD should fail. So what I can do, I can try to link this file again. Um, I'm gonna just remove this. Uh, and do rule set equals dot stoplight, no, spectral dot no tags dot OEML. And so, you know, you can see that the error that has been put away from the, from the tool has been changing. But are all, this is only, you know, this is the set of the rules that we think are okay for Open API, but of course you have your own one in your company. And so what you can also do, you can define your own rule set. Uh, I'm not gonna go into the DSL because you know, you have the documentation, you can check it out, but the idea is you can say, um, you know, if the info object, and in particular the title field, is not equal to stoplight, I want to say this is a style error. And so if I run this thing again using this other configuration file, uh, stoplight.yaml, it's gonna output my custom error. You know, the info should contain stoplight. And so you, and you can also, programmatically change it, defining your own style guide, and so that when everybody comes in your company, you know, you have a new developer, is starting to do an API, is gonna be guided through the right way because the linter is gonna yell at him continuously. And we also, you know, the, this tool is also offering a JavaScript API, and so you can easily integrate it into your CI CD. So just one example that I did is, uh, uh, It's so small from my monitor. Okay. One of the things that I did using Spectral, um, I'm not sure if you noticed it, but GitHub has been releasing the actions, which is a way to hook up into your repository whenever you're pushing. And so what I did is, whenever I push something into my repository, I want Spectral to check out w w what my API looks like. And so the result is, is something like this. Uh, you know, you can easily see directly from GitHub what is wrong with your API, if that's okay, and if you click on the link, you're gonna go directly to the line, and you can comment on it and iterate it, just because, you know, we have a JavaScript API and you can use it. Um, so again, uh, Spectral, this is the Open API 2 and 3 linter, which is extensible and so on and so forth. Feel free to check it out. This is the first thing that I wanted to show you. The second thing, uh, which can help you in case you're doing a lot of APIs, you know, it's a rapid iteration. So you have an open API specification and you want to get a sense how is it to uh, work with such API. Because if you follow the waterfall model, you do the API, you give it to your developers and they're like, eh, what did you do? I don't want this. So it is kind of important to involve the people in the feedback and move it from the very end to the very beginning of the process. And so the tool I've been working on for, I think probably the last five months has been Prism, which is an open source 
uh, mock server for OpenAPI 2 and 3. So you give it an OpenAPI file, it's going to spin up a mock server, which is going to behave exactly in the way you specify it. And so you can give it to your front-end developers, and they can start crafting the UI. I'm going to be showing uh, just uh, no more than two or three examples, and, um, and then I'll, uh, I'll end it over. Um, actually, I'm going to just close this, open another window, so that we can see what is going on here. So um, I have already an OpenAPI 3 file, OpenAPI 2 and 3. We, we do support both in Spectral and Prism. And so I can see, I can say um, examples, pet store, OpenAPI 3.json. And so it's going to analyze my file and it's going to spin up the mock server. And it's telling, you know, according to your OpenAPI file, this is the actions that you're offering. And so I can simply do HTTP, localhost, 4810 pets 10, you're going to get a response. But more importantly, one of the things that I think is important is you're going to get the logging, which is going to tell you, I received this request. This is the data that I got. The validations rule have been passing. I found a compatible content. This is what I'm returning to you. And um, you, know, you can do this multiple times. And you can see that the example is static, which is OK to a certain point. But what we also did. Uh, we implemented a dynamic example generator. And so if you pass the minus D flag, um, it's going to say dynamic examples enabled. And so every time I do this, I'm going to get a diff, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm going to get a different response, according to the schema anyway. And so this is going to help you, your developers to encounter edge cases so they don't get stuck with the static example. Like if the name is going to be fluffy for every time, they're going to probably size the UI somehow. But if you get a different thing any, every single time, a valid example anyway, you know, maybe they're going to encounter edge cases ahead of the time and prepare accordingly. Another thing we can do, which is also, uh, I think, kind of cool, is we validate the payloads. And so, for example, if I do uh, pets find by status, I think, the, yeah. Um, so this request in particular has a schema for the request body. And so Prism has been checking it out, didn't pass the validation, has been trying to find the defined error response, 42, didn't find it. Generic 400, didn't find it. And then I'm going to craft the response for you. And that's uh, what I got back. Like, we made this response because uh, the query parameter with code parameter is not OK. And then I can probably simply fix this. Uh, uh, what is this? Uh, code equals sold the uh, it's not uh, code it's actually status I think yeah and then I get responses again but just to show what is going to really to help you here if I can sell this and I yeah you can see why Prisma has responded in such a way? Because it was trying to find this response. I didn't find it. I found this other one, but it wasn't good enough. And then I fall back to the error. And so if you don't understand why Prisma responded in such a way, you can see the logs, and you're going to follow the flow. Uh, and you know, we have also other bunch of features, like contract validation. We can generate payloads in XML, JSON, as long as you know, your open API specification supports it. And uh, you, know, you can give this server to your front-end developers, and they can try it on the spot, start to craft the UI, give it the feedback, and you didn't write any code. And so making the change is actually cheap. Make a pull request to the document in your GitHub repository. You, Spectral is going to check that it's OK with your internal policy. You merge it. The Prism server is going to be updated. You're good to go for another round of iteration. So I think this is going to hopefully help you to move forward and faster. Uh, this stuff is all open source, and I, I work on this project almost on full time. And uh, if you have any question or something, um, come talk to me later. I'm going to be here for uh, the whole meetup. Uh, thank you for the th your time, guys. <laughs>